I want to show you how to use the GameCrafters custom punch-out system with Inkscape. First we go to create a custom game. And let's just name the game custom punch-out. That'll make it easier to find later. Now we scroll down to small punch-outs and choose custom small punch-out. Like anything that we do with laser cutting, we're going to want to enable UV coating. This will allow the uh, any kind of scorch marks to wipe off easily. Um, and now we need to generate some artwork uh, in this size. I've downloaded the template for Inkscape. Uh, there are templates for Illustrator as well, uh, but you're going to want the Inkscape SVG file. Um, and I've put it on this layer called Face. So now we need to resize this to make it fit our um, template. Uh, if you hold down control while you resize something in Inkscape, it will uh, automatically scale it proportionally. Um, and I'm going to leave quite a bit of space between the monster and the blue uh, lines here. Let's talk about the borders just a little bit. Unlike a normal template, you would have, in a normal template, you would have uh, a red line showing you the cut line. However, here, we are defining the cut line, so there is no cut line defined here. Uh, instead, the border of the image represents uh, the border of the slug on the sheet. Since this is a small punch-out, uh, there will be ten small punch-outs on a sheet, each punch-out measuring uh, three and a quarter by five and a quarter inches. The dashed line here represents kind of our safe zone. We want to keep all of our images and um, uh, our cut lines inside that safe zone. So therefore, uh, I want to make my monster smaller than the safe zone so that uh, it will fit in there along with the cut lines that I still have to put in. Um, I can stretch it out a little bit more. Uh, and then I'm probably going to want to go down here and center it uh, nicely. Okay, so we've got our monster in. Uh, we need to have, uh, if we're going to do something fancy like create a custom punch out, we should probably show front and back so you could see which direction the monster is facing. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a, another layer uh, and then we'll call this one back. So now uh, if we look at our front and back, we've got, it looks like he's facing us and looking facing away. Uh, it's pretty cool. All right, so we've taken care of our face, we've taken care of our back. I'm going to go ahead and lock both of those because we've got those in place now. Uh, but we do still need to create our cut line. So I'm going to go ahead and create another layer. Uh, we'll call that one cut. Um, and now I'm going to use the pencil tool and we're going to trace around him. Now we want to be careful here. We don't want to get in really tight. Um, we want to, uh, you know, kind of give it a wide berth here. Also, the Game Crafter is expecting us to trace the face image. It will automatically mirror it for uh, the back. So I'm going to go turn off the back layer so that way we are tracing the face. Uh, so I'm just going to give it a wide berth here and trace around his hand, uh, kind of come in here and then up and over his uh, horns, down around his head a little bit here, uh, again up over the horn, down toward the hand and around, and just again generally giving it a wide berth but not going out past the dashed blue lines. So that should about do it. This is pretty jaggedy, so let's go up to Path and hit Simplify. Looks a little nicer. Uh, let's then go up to Path and do Union. That'll merge the line into one big thing. Uh, also, I don't like black for this, so let's go uh, change the stroke color uh, to red. Just looks a little nicer. It looks like a cut line, so uh, a little bit more what we're used to. Um, and then let's... Uh, we need to do a few more things before we're ready to upload this file. Uh, we need to add nicks. Um, and you're kind of wondering, what's a nick? Uh, well, let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, lock up the cut for right now. I'm going to turn off the cut line. 
um, and let's also go turn off the face so all we have left is the original template um, which we need to delete before we upload but we need to keep it here so that we have our rules in place um, and so right here it says nix to prevent cut pieces from falling out of a slug all cut lines must have at least two nicks a nick is a break in a cut line that keeps the piece attached to the slug the recommended nick size is 0.1 inches now this is important because uh, well in a bigger piece you know if it fell out we'd probably see it and be able to uh, you know put it back into your game for you but um, in general uh, you want to put nicks in here because if stuff falls out of a slug we may not see it uh, and there are lots of holes in the machinery where it could just slide down uh, and no one would notice um, and so we're not going to go fishing through the machine looking for p little parts that you uh, didn't attach into the slug so you need to put nicks in here so that it'll keep a little bit of material holding that piece into the slug uh, and this you know point zero one inches is small enough that it'll pop out easily it won't leave uh, it won't leave any real um, you know big chunks for you but it'll be good enough to hold that in there generally speaking you want to put in um, you know a, a few different nicks on a, uh, on a piece to you know enough to keep it held in there from at least a few different directions uh, the bigger the piece more nicks you probably want to put in um, but I think I think four nicks should be fine for our monster here so uh, let's go back up here uh, and turn on our cut line and actually let's turn off the template for now so we can just very easily see uh, what it is that we're dealing with uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, zoom in here just a bit too um, so the first thing we want to do uh, to create this is we're gonna draw a box that'll go right across uh, this area right here um, oh I need to uh, select cut and unlock it again so that I have a, a place to actually draw so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and again draw right in here um, a box and uh, now that box is too big uh, remember we want this to be um, we want this to be 0 0.01 inches uh, to make a good a good nick uh, and then I'm gonna move it down a little bit there um, and so we've got this box that we've drawn across uh, our uh, cut line so uh, if we take um, if we zoom back out here and highlight this whole thing so these two different components here um, we can then go up to path and cut path uh, and then let's zoom in while this is still highlighted here um, and you'll see that it has in fact created a little cut right there for us All right and again if we uh, slide over here it has created another little cut for us and again I'm just going in here selecting that and then hitting delete and so that's just creating a little gap where the uh, material will remain and hold the monster in place um, now I need to do this again uh, but I can't go across the whole thing I have two different segments so I'm gonna have to do these individually so again I will uh, draw a box uh, and then this time we're gonna do it on the width so we're at 0 0.01 uh, and we've got ourselves a, a little width here uh, like so and so again we're gonna highlight the top piece and this new box that we put in here we go to object uh, or I'm sorry go to path and cut path uh, and again we go right up in here and we'll see our uh, little segment that we can delete and then we'll get go down here and do that again uh, again I'm just gonna draw a little box and we're gonna set this to 0 0.01 and we've created a, a little nick uh, again I need to highlight the bottom piece and that uh, go to path and cut path and so now we have broken this up into four different segments uh, four different line segments you can see the little break right there little break there little break there little break there hopefully 
that will be enough to hold our monster uh, in place. Um, now, if this were a bigger, heavier piece, uh, I probably would put in a few more nicks. Um, if it was a really tiny piece, maybe I'd only put in three nicks instead of uh, instead of four. But you you want to put in at least three nicks, I would say, because if you do only two, it could spin on its axis uh, and rip out pretty easily. So putting in three nicks gives you kind of that uh, a little bit of tension in every direction. Uh, or in this case, I put in four nicks, and again, if you had an even bigger piece, you might put in five or six nicks. Uh, just the bigger it is, you want to put in more uh, to hold it in place. Uh, okay, so we've gone ahead and uh, designed our cut file now, um, and so I can go back and I can see uh, yep, it indeed still lines up, everything looks good. Uh, now we need to go in and export all of our data uh, for the Game Crafter. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete um, this, uh, the original template layer. Um, we don't need that anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that entirely. Um, I'm also going to hide our cut layer, because obviously I don't want that part printed. Uh, and so just the face is open right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, uh, this might be a good time to actually save uh, our whole drawing, so that way if we need to come in here and do anything else, uh, we can do that. So I'll go ahead and hit save, um, and that is out. So now, let's go and export our, um, our face. So I go up here to File, uh, Export PNG Image, and uh, the deal is I want to set my width and height according to the specifications uh, of the template. So this is the small uh, custom punch out template, which is three and a quarter inches by five and a quarter inches. Uh, and so therefore the image size uh, is 975 by 1575. Um, you can see that uh, the upload here, it would tell you this is how big it needs to be. Or if you went to like the pricing page, small custom punch out, uh, it tells you right here the sizes, all of that. So uh, let's go back uh, in over here and uh, I think we're ready to export. Uh, so I've typed in monster face here. Um, again, I could put in something else there if I wanted to, but monster face is what we're looking for. Uh, and then we need to export. Uh, and I had already exported this as a test, so that's why it's asking me to replace it. Uh, so now we need to uh, export our uh, back. So we'll go ahead and close that. Uh, we will uh, hide our face and open up the back here. And again, go to File, Export, PNG Image. Again, our settings should be fine, but we do want to change this export as to be monster back. Um, and go ahead and hit save there uh, and hit export. So now it's written out the back. Uh, we can close this out. Now the last part is a little bit um, weird. You wouldn't expect this piece. So uh, we can't actually leave our back and our face in this file. We have to get rid of them even if we were to hide them. Hiding them isn't good enough. We actually have to delete them from the document because uh, if they are in the cut file when we upload it will destroy our cut lines. It will not work. Um, so there, an error will be created and it's, and it's just bad. So we just need to delete those out of our document entirely so that only the cut line remains. Um, so then once we have that uh, we go up here to file um, and save as. Now, uh, we're doing save as rather than export here because Inkscape's native format is SVG. Uh, I don't want to do save because I don't want to overwrite my original file that has the uh, image already in here uh, in case I need to go back and make changes. So I want to do file save as and we will call this uh, just monster.svg. Um, and so I go ahead and hit save, and uh, we now have the three files that we need uh, for our monster. So we're ready to go back to the Game Crafter. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click here and upload monster face. Uh, and so we go ahead and do that. And there we go, got our face. Uh, I'll click on back here, and we'll replace the face 
with a back for that part of the image. So now we've got our face and our back, and now we need to upload our cut file. Uh, and so I'm going to upload monster.svg. Now this is asking us uh, what uh, editor did we use to export these. Um, SVG has this little uh, notion behind the scenes it stores everything in what it calls user units. You might think of them as pixels. Um, and uh, Illustrator uh, thinks of that as there's 72 user units in an inch. Uh, where Inkscape uh, goes about 25% bigger and says there are 90 user units within an inch. If you were using some other program, uh, you would have to find out how many user units or pixels there were in an inch when it exports SVG files. So since this is Inkscape, uh, I'm going to go ahead and type in 90. We have a handy little reminder right here, Inkscape equals 90. Um, and so I said OK, and we upload our SVG file. So now that we've got all of our files, we can go ahead and hit our proof button here, uh, and we see our outline uh, lines up with what we're trying to cut. We approve that one. You'll note that the uh, system automatically mirrors it to show you the back, uh, so we can go ahead and approve that one. And uh, then at that point, we basically just hit, you know, we can set how many uh, we want of the monster, and we're done. Uh, that At this point, it is just like a regular component you can use uh, with anything else. So you can mix and match it uh, with chits or um, just order it by itself or include it as part of a game, however uh, works for you. And that's it.